the interface itself and the query language is still sort of evolving and being developed. But Jan's been on some like interesting exploratory missions. One to, I think he's been working on a transit library for Common Lisp and then building on top of that to create a, a, a V2 client for Common Lisp. And there might even be, you know, just exciting teaser for like uh, for the new year, which is um, Jan's going to be talking about a Rust client that he's working on. But um, uh, yeah, XTDB V2 in Common Lisp. Over to you, Jan. Okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Th thanks for coming. Uh, I can see there's like lots of people. So yeah, here's the, um, here's the presentation at hacked. To can you hear me well to start with? Is yeah, okay? all good. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. Okay. This is basically, there's going to be some slides and then some coding, um, some, some demo actually. So here is basically what's going to happen with this presentation. Um, there is a little bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, closure is really a subset of common list uh, on the JVM. And I, I will never repeat that. Um, and also, you know, when you've done closure and you went through understanding closure and you move to a common list, you realize that, you know, um, besides, I mean, except from, except, except for some um, syntactic syntax, which has been introduced in enclosure, uh, then it's basically common list. I mean, a subset of it, obviously. And we will have the occasion to talk about this uh, later. So <clears throat> I said the equation, the equation is basically, you know, uh, closure equal common list or subset of common list plus the JVM. And um, yeah, it's not random actually. So back then, you know, Rich, uh, Rich Hickey, um um, you know, had the, the good intuition to um, to, to get uh, a, a decent list on the JVM, and and the JVM was ubiquitous and it's been ubiquitous, um, you know. And we 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 will try to look at uh, the legacy of the JVM. Um, then you know, um, we'll see how how the the closure has, has its roots in in uh, common list. Um, then obviously, yeah, there's the thing about common list, it's been around for 40 years and, um, and, uh, and I, I can hear like, there's a, there's a strong community of, of people who wouldn't change, wouldn't budge, you know, a, a Yota and they, yeah, they're laughing and they say, you know, it's going to still be around in 40 years, you know, and God knows what happened next, but they don't really care about what's going on. And on the side because they're so certain of the you know what they have. So let's let's delve into the the history. I think it's quite interesting. So as you know, know I'm old, and I, I was basically sitting in some um, uh, Silicon Valley office where you know this all started basically. And so I'm gonna just like uh, you know share that a little bit. I think it's interesting. Um, yeah. So what the state of the tech giants. Um, it was basically a ganging of some tech giants against Microsoft back in the late 90s. <clears throat> and yeah, so the background in the late 90s was basically, um, you know, uh, um, rapid growth of internet application and software development. It was a big expansion, a big bang. And at that time, uh, it was basically Microsoft was dominating the software industry, you know, with like this, like Windows stuff and, and NT and then, you know, you had that and then you had IBM and mainframe stuff and then probably nothing in, in the middle, basically. Um, and so, so I was working at Oracle Corporation back then. And yeah, I clearly remember this time. It was kind of cool, actually. Uh, there's been a gang. A ganging or you know like a, a, of an alliance um, of Oracle, Sun Microsystem, and IBM uh, to try to challenge uh, Microsoft uh, growing uh, influence. That was pretty cool at this time. Uh, I just just need to to uh, talk a bit about uh, so everybody knows Oracle, what they became basically. Uh, obviously, everybody knows IBM, uh, and so Sun Microsystem they don't exist anymore. They they, they got bought by by by. Uh, Oracle Corp, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, back then they had a very, very good. Uh, uh, they were. Uh, it was uh, one of the best tech company out there. You know, they had super, like super nice technology. Their operating system was impeccable. 
they were inheriting from the Barclays, the Barclays tradition of Unixes, basically, you know, the other one being ATT Unixes. And they were, you know, they were you know, super good. And uh, yeah, and they had, they, they had a lot of research projects and all that stuff. Part of their project was the JVM. And so why JVM? So like oh, Sun Microsystem had an history in investing in research on operating system. But then it was still an era where people were researching. And, you know, they were trying to find new stuff. And I, I think I remember part of their project was a, a, thing, a thing called Chorus Microsystem, which was like a microkernel company, super, super, um, super high tech. Uh, you know, micro kernel was a hot topic back then. Uh, and then actually they had both micro chorus, micro system, micro system. They bought it for the technology and they, they dismantled it, but they took bits and bits and part of this technology. And I think that bubbled up into the JVM design. Um, yeah. And then the plan, the planning is, so they were, so we're going to promote the, the JVM as a way to counter Microsoft.net stuff, which was like, a, you know, going uphill. And so the key point, you know, we were really listening to that. The key point where, you know, JMS, like JMS, 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 so write once, run everywhere. You know, that was the, that was the big motto. Everybody was repeating this, you know, it was, it was, it was the cool stuff, you know. Um, obviously, uh, collaboration. So the JBM, you know, would be a collaborative effort between many companies. And then, and then you know, everything was made possible for... Uh, for that to happen, basically, they were sharing technology, you know, they were encouraging, the, you know, virtually encouraging everyone to be using this technology, basically, so that it can disseminate and, you know, for adoption. And it was positioned as a versatile and cross-platform solution. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll see more about that, cross-platform. Um, and yes, it had some positive impact because you know part of this time was intensifying competition in software and web dev you know so um that was a big thing you know like people were competing so they were trying to gain competitive advantage uh, based on technology um they obviously encouraged open standards and cross platform compatibility so i remember at that time the big thing was uh, the core bar i think it was omg omg uh, it was basically Corba, and then they had a bunch of specification pretty much for everything, like message passing, you know, like, a, you know, you know, you know they, they, it was pretty cool, actually. It was pretty useful, and this is where Corba started, actually. So, obviously, uh, at Java and then this ecosystem started to mirror that effort, that Corba effort, and then, you know, soon enough, we had this JMS, like Java messaging system, which was basically you know, uh, uh, porting, um, you know, porting the, uh, the Quarba messaging broker. Ah, it was like OMG, I think. I can't remember the acronym. But it was, they had a message broker and it was basically porting that stuff, like pops up and all that stuff specified. And, you know, and there was a, so then you know, there was a bunch of companies doing, you know, committee meetings, you know, and then, uh, and that kind of things. And then one of the positive impacts as well is, is laid groundwork for future enterprise solution, you know, and cloud computing, and most importantly, cloud computing. And that's very important. That's extremely important. If you notice this cloud computing stuff, uh, it wasn't present. It wasn't really um, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the scope as, as, as a cloud, as we know the cloud now, but it was, it was hinted. And it was, you know, it was the next evolution, basically, right? So... That was kind of part of the positive stuff. So yeah, I mean, obviously they came up with a grand vision and there's a bit of sarcasm here. And, uh, you know, obviously these are all my opinion and uh, bear with me. Um, so, you know, it was, the, yeah, it was, it was basically aimed to replace like the operating system. All of a sudden the operating, the OS stuff wasn't cool anymore. We didn't give a shit about it, so we didn't care anymore about it. It was not, it was just that thing, you know. Oh, we need the JVM, I will give you access to everything and don't worry about the rest. You know, it was it. So um yeah, so this 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 philosophy of right ones uh, run it anywhere uh, to extend to everything basically, including the OS. You see, it's like it was almost I remember clearly 
at Oracle, I mean, one of the VP of engineering uh, saying in a presentation that there would be just a big JVM running everything, basically with thousands and thousands and thousands of threads in it, and that would be it. You know, it's like that was just like the old vision. I only use JVMs. You know, so, and I remember as, as well clearly, um, yeah, just I, I think I'll talk about it after. Yes, of course. So, like, one of the promise was like, yeah, we're going to handle massive multitasking. You know, this is going to be super cool. We're going to be uh, managing tens of thousands of threads. You know, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, unparalleled concurrency and performance and yada, 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 et cetera. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, at this time, by the way, at this time, the OS wasn't scaling properly. And I remember clearly, uh, you know, we went from uh, SMP stuff where, you know, the, the, where the promise was to, you know, first of all, it was like stick as many CPUs on a bus at a scale, basically. And then we found out that the bus has limitation, electronic limitation. We couldn't, we couldn't we, you know, at some point it was, the bus would crash, basically. And then they started doing this, this NUMA, non uniform memory access, or quad, which are now mainstreams. But we started this, this NUMA stuff. And I remember exactly like where I was working at Sequent Computer, we were bought by IBM, but uh, Microsoft was paying us a fortune to get uh, NT scale on, on a, sim a single quad, and that thing wouldn't scale at, scale at all. It was just falling apart completely. So, you know, the promises were not really matching uh, what the, uh, the hardware was delivering at this time anyway. Yeah, so JVM is the core of computing, you see. So everything is a JVM. Everything is running as a version is going to run on JVM. Um, you know, the world is, is basically uh, interconnection of JVMs, and of story. And then this big, big uh, buzzword, which we hear all the time, I'm not sure, I haven't heard it in a while. It's like the seamless stuff. It's going to be, it needs to be seamless, right? Seamless is good. You know, if it's not seamless, it's not good. You know, are you, you, know, are you seamless? Yes, cool. You know, if not, then you have an issue, you know? Uh, so it was going to be a big evolution of the architect, the system architecture. Uh, you know, we would just be moving uh, all the promises, basically, you know, beyond the, the limitation, and, you know, the, the hardware limitation um, and operating system limitation. And it would be uniform, you know, you don't worry about the OS, don't worry. Yeah, because back then, you know, there, there was a, a zoo of, of technology and, and hardware and operating systems. Yeah, you'd have like some, you know, ex super exotic stuff, you know, like nine bits uh, worlds, basically, you see like uh, stuff like ABCD and things and blah. And so it was a big deal because, you know, and, and like tons of different chips and, and architecture for, you know, CPU architectures. And so, I mean, these issues were really proper issues. You know, it was just like, uh, so the promises, like, don't worry anymore because, you know, as long as you have a JVM, you're going to be fine. I don't have to worry about all of those stuff, you see. Um, so, so just, just one thing. I remember this a story back then work at Oracle, like the server, the, the core technology, the people doing the server technology, uh, um, they were, you know, kind of hardcore, ZZ top. Uh, you know, C low level developers basically, you know, like uh, the kind of, um, and they were laughing. You see, it's like they were just laughing. And uh, they kind of thought it's, uh, you know, they, they, it's like a little bit, they didn't believe in it. It was just, okay, they're just marketing stuff, you know, they, Oracle is spending, they're all spending fortune just to defeat Microsoft, but it's just marketing. It's just, it's just to market stuff. We, we don't need to believe in this stuff. However, that, be, that became something in way, you know, that became reality, basically. You see, it's like, that was not a joke. It, I, I don't know if it was like, it meant not to be a joke, but it happened to be, to become bread and butter for everybody, basically, the JVM. Um, yeah, so we have as well to talk about the economical landscapes in the 90s versus now. And that stuff has changed a lot, you see. So like, you know, it's, it's nice to remind that in the late 90s, you know, it was the, uh, um, it was a global capitalistic exp expansion. You see, it's like, you know, uh, you know, prof profusionally expand. Uh, don't worry about the rest, you know, just expand. Uh, it was the, the dot, dot com boom, you know, a lot of, you know, it was this bubble thing, a lot of speculation, massive speculation. 
you know, most importantly, there was this assumption of infinite natural resources. You know, we don't care that, you know, we don't even think about where this is coming from, you know. That's like, don't worry about it. It's like, you know, that's, I mean, capital market will grow based on extraction from the earth, basically, you know, that's, a, that's just, that was just cool. Don't worry about it. It was not at all something we'd think about it. Uh, we didn't think about, um, you know, it's obviously, obvious, uh, uh, environmental concern were completely overlooked. Uh, you know, it was like, a, don't be a party pooper. I mean, like, of course, some scientists already worried about this, but they were not heard. They were just simply ignored, you know. And obviously, it was like high consumerism, high, high consumerism, uh, you know, and then um, focus on uh, short, short-term short gains, you know, and it was all, you know, who's going to become the next millionaire and, uh, and billionaire. And that set, that set the stages, the stage for nowadays challenges. Um, so that was the late 90s. Uh, and then now in the uh, 2023, well, you know, we all know that there's been, there are escalating concerns and shift in a global perspective. Uh, yeah, so these, these are these slides, it's kind of common knowledge now, if you, you know, if you listen to the news, uh, there's lots everywhere, civil unrest, uh, fueled by energy insecurities and, uh, you know, ge geopolitical tension. We've got Russia, we've got China, you know, you know, we've got you know, all, of, all these stuff. You know. Obviously, we, we realized that, uh, you know, natural resources were a finite uh, thing. And obviously, we have to adapt, you know, global policies uh, under pressure, like, you know, and as an emergency stuff, you know. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we kind of, it comes, it comes clear to us that things like bitcoins, you know, are complete, complete nonsensical. You know, they have this proof of work. You know, what the hell is this? Just burning, burning words to speak, burning, just doing some random computation for what? You know, just proving that you work. You know, I don't know, just like, it just makes any sense at all. It's absurd. Uh, yeah, and then, so technology and economy uh, are facing a critical uh, juncture to, uh, for sustainable transformation. Uh, you know, it's this change or adapt, to the, adapt or die. It's kind of this situation, adapt or die. That's, that's the landscape in 2023. Uh, yeah, so, so let's see now the evolution of the GDM's vision. What happened to this big vision, this grand vision? You know, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. So there's no, there's no scoop that, um, uh, Nowadays, you know, we are at the edge of uh, containers and clouds. This is, you know, this is what's happening now, containers and clouds, clouds, not clowns. Um, yeah, so this, this, uh, this, uh, this vision, basically, of the JVM as a univer universal platform to, uh, to yeah, so... From a, this vision of uh, JVM as a, you know, as as everything to conte containerization, you know, so the JVM vision has been overtaken by containerization uh, technology, basically. So we, we, you know, I am certain I want I want I want Docker, I am certain I want a cloud, uh, JVM. I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's another question, basically. Do I need a JVM, right? And uh, this is the rise of uh, Docker. You know, containers now, they are the building block, the building block for modern software deployments. It's all, you know, container, technologies like containers, uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, you know, and all of these things, you know, and, uh, you know, this, this is what we need now. Um, and, um, and cloud computing is the new padding, you know. Uh, we have this infra huge infrastructure, you know, which is our Legos, you know, and uh, in a way, you know, these cloud, cloud stuff are not so bad because uh, uh, towards green computing because, you know, they have a chance to um, man to manage resources efficiently, basically, and possibly, you know, with, uh, they can do it. Um, yeah, and so there's a shift from the JVM-centric to container-centric, and that's a fact, you know. So that's the uh, irony of scale. The, the 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 JVM's goal for universality is now encapsulated with lar an even larger cloud ecosystem. This is like a, um, what 
yeah, so I, I had to have these. That's that's personal, basically, though. That, that's my thinking here. You know, this, I can't help but make an energy with consumerism, basically. Uh, and back then, you know, uh, the mindset of consumerism, uh, and which I think uh, the programmers should basically have a, a similar mindset as we have now in consumerism, you know, just as we uh, responsible consumers question the environmental cost of product programmer should think about, you know, the resource and the, um, the, 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 their resource demands on the code of that code. You see, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. Um, yeah, so some run times and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it a, a finger pointing. So the gym is one of those, but you know, to, to be honest, a, any runtime, uh, which offer resources and which offers to manage resources for you. And we can talk about, uh, uh, you know, um, um, memory management. Um, yeah, offers the same similarity. It's basically, it comes at a cost and we should not f forget these costs. Uh, and yeah, exactly. So I'm just repeating myself here. Um, Exactly. So yes, that's our choice. Just, just like you know, we we have the choice. We have the choice. The legacy is JVM. We have a choice, you know, to say no. And and that's coming to where my next point about you know this one, my passion, not my passion, my interest for a common list, because that's that could be a very well, um, you know, yeah, we we don't see that. So what's in the modern stack? Cloud containers efficiency. Uh, we said green computing. We talked about this, uh, con continuation as a backbone, uh, efficiency in runtimes environments. You see, so, okay, I need containers, but what's running in, the, in my containers? You see, do I need to duplicate basically another container layer or do I need to duplicate something already duplicated, you know? And uh, how does the JVM fit in that picture? Why do I need a JVM in the, you know, like, you know, do I have to? And yes, sometimes I have to for some reason. You know, but like, uh, yeah, acknowledge this fact. Sometimes it's not avoidable. But when I when I have the choice, you know, like, uh, does that fit the picture? I know, barely know. You know, we start trying now a massive trend in things like Rust. Uh, I can tell you that C and C++ by the number of uh, uh, recruiters uh, contacting me on, on uh, you know, uh, uh, about C and C++, basically, you know, there's a, apparently a demand in these like those languages as well. And uh, I'm, I'm go back, gonna go back to this equation. You know, if you take Logio and you subscribe to JVM, you got common lisp. Uh, you know, that's that's the other uh, end of the equation, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where I wanna go. So now there's a bunch of, um, so common lisp, so common lisp, yeah, I, I remember one the other day, Renzo did a presentation, a light note, a lightning talk on you know families of Linux of of uh, 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 lisps. He, he he sadly forgot to mention Emacs Lisp as one of those, but nevertheless he spoke about the rest basically. You know, and common Lisp is a big thing in there. We got Skim, got you know Emacs Emacs Lisp in it. So yeah, I'm going to talk about common Lisp here. Uh, you know, fortunately there's excellent excellent um, implementation of common list available for free um, you know and there's a list of that so SBCL is the top of the list uh, you know that's what I'm using um, uh, oh yeah yeah common list is uh, standardized there is an ANSI spec for common list you see so like uh, when when two compilers or two, two list environments say they, they are compliant then you're you know, your code is going to port, actually. You know, that's as simple as that. Uh, so CCI closure, or surprise closure. ECL is unbeatable. Uh, CLASP is super interesting. CLASP is, um, is common list on uh, LLVM, basically. Um, that's brilliant. That's for some guys, I think, who do uh, genetics or molecular research, obviously. So a lot of research is in common list. And they, they they came up with um, you know with um, implementation of a common list running on a, on an LVM basically and natively running an LVM. So this is lightning fast. 
and a cell of cool. This one is completely gone. And anyway, it's still here. And then you've got a bunch of uh, commercial. And I know company using commercial stuff. And they're pretty good, actually. There's this works. And, uh, and Allegro CL. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Lisp is a vast thing. And I couldn't go. I'm going to show some code comparing. Uh, uh, Lisp versus Clojure, and to show that they're not far away, actually, they are actually the, almost identically the same, identical. Um, but like uh, we talk about efficiency and CPU stuff, um, you got, we have a common Lisp implementation with that compiled to com uh, to machine code, uh, and so that they are extremely efficient CPU-wise. Um, that's true for numerical and uh, CPU intensive stuff. So there are some benchmark out there, which which show that some list is running as as fast as C code. Um, so that's basically yeah. This is a very small memory footprint. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, at the end, I'm, I, I run a um, oh yeah, I run a, a demo. Um, yeah. We'll show that more of that later. Startup time. There's no question. <laughs> Everybody knows about this. So the garbage collector stuff. So okay. So just a word about this. So Lisp, sorry, JVM. So closure is a functional stuff and has made a bunch of hypotheses on you know how they handle like immutability and things like that, blah, blah, blah. So they have a very strong stance on you know how things should be and things like that. Uh, and then obviously they rely on the uh, JVM garbage collector. Obviously, this JVM garbage collector is like highly complicated. You've got like a tons of options. It's been it's like highly worked piece of software and so forth. Anyway, nevertheless, it's a generic, generic stuff. You see, so like you know, you know, no matter what they do in closure, they have to fit into the garbage collection of the JVM, basically. You know, which is specific and I'm like kind of you know not designed. I guess I would say it's not be designed for com for for functional programming. Right. Whereas the garbage collectors of uh, common Lisp environments is specifically designed for functional programming, basically, and the needs of Lisp, and that's a very that's a massive advantage. Basically, they usually work much faster and smaller. Um, yeah, there's the TCO. We don't really care about those stuff, but you know, most of the compiler they have TCOs. You know, it's just like a red herring for people love it. You know, but you know. Um, yeah, so about data structure efficiency. Um, yeah, I have a style on that actually, you know. Yeah. The the choice of closure for um, immutable data structures comes at a cost, actually, computing cost. Uh, and um, common list has none of that, um, which is obviously a double, double side sword. Uh, because uh, it can be dangerous, obviously. And obviously, you've got direct, direct access hardware. So it's like you're never far away from the CPU or from the from the NIC. Uh, if it, if it, what you want, you see, so latencies are super quick and stuff, and it's not painful, obviously. Most of these stuff compile, they like they have a C binding, so just link, you can just click on the library, just call the library directly. There's no pain. Obviously, Java is JNI. Uh, yeah, so. So here's, here's a bit of code. So about immutability. So here I wrote, so I don't, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't know how to, to have, because that's just my first presentation using reveal. I don't know how to get all that code in, in one thing. But anyway, there's like the same, there's two version of the same function, uh, which are matching to hash, to hash tables. You see, so the very first stuff I do, obviously, I, I basically create a, a new H table. That, that's that's a creation. Uh, give it in the same um, uh, test because a H table, uh, you know, associated to with the H table in common list, you got the test you're gonna use to compare for equality of keys, basically. And this is okay. So I copy and I take the, the stuff of the the source, and and what I do that's a new thing. And I, I do a map map C on, on basically all these. Uh, uh, this uh, this next basically so map says on the next so for all of the elements 
of that stuff, I have a map hash, and then I basically at the end I return the new created stuff. So like I do I completely get yeah, this is this is like super stuff like set f get hash. This is classical. So basically, uh, this is a lambda from for all the key value of the stuff. Basically, I have a key. I have a value here. I don't show it's the keys. Uh, there are basically two parameters. And the set f get ash get ash is like you know this is a stand this is how you set f stuff in in Lisp um, and I you know and and I just pull and then I return the the the, the hash table um, whereas the uh, the merge in place stuff which I I know the question is like what's what's wrong with that stuff. You know, uh, I I do I do the copy in place. You see, it's like uh, I modify uh, I modify my uh, my uh, I modify my hash table and uh, and return the hash table. So I'm returning H, H, HT. So every time I set the new values of HT to the the, the values and of story, you see, it's like a, and I return the same one. You see, so like there's no allocation here. And what's wrong with that? You see. Um, Yes, of course, you see, so multiple dispatch versus uh, closure versus, uh, you know, here's a multiple dispatch on two things. Uh, you have here, you know, the, the classical example. So the dispatch, so the, the death multi, the dispatch function is basically on two things. It's going to return an array, basically, of two things, the class of a chef, a class of content. And I'm going to use that to dispatch, basically. So, you know, I'm drawing a circle. Uh, in, uh, in the context of the console, the circle in a GUI, uh, GUI context, and so forth and so forth. This is basically, uh, uh, and then this is how I use it. And the same stuff, oh, the same stuff in Lisp, except we have class. And so, you know, I just need to define a class. So this is a chef here. I define a circle. These are these are ways to access the various part of my class. Uh, we have a rectangle here. Uh, you know, it's got, uh, uh, yeah, a width and a height and uh, accessors and so forth in it from these are, this is basically, yeah, a stance to, um, to create a class and, and I have a, a generic, which is like the multi, but then here, I don't have to specify anything. So the difference, the main difference here is like, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the multi is done on the type of uh, the, the the parameters basically, uh, and so in a way the closure one are more flexible, uh, but we don't have silo you know, close basically. So here's the same stuff dispatching on it, and I, here I'm creating. So that's the same code basically. No big deal here. And some code now, you know, this is um, I've I've posted a link of the uh, uh, to the um, the um, yeah, this mini repo I've done basically, <clears throat> and um, yeah, and so here's here's I'm gonna run this code at the end actually to show you how this works, and more importantly the resources taken by each uh, client individually, you know, how they compare. But that's essentially what I do. You know, I'm just getting a, a node, and I'm looping for like uh, you know one ten thousand times, uh, you know, generating a new. Um, Oh, this is wrong actually. This is this is the old school. It's wrong in the sense where this this is coming from an old code, but the, this uh, put is not not working anymore. It's not it's not the right syntax. But nevertheless, you get the, the gist of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, I get back a TX key, a transaction key, and and I'm I'm doing a, a, a fetch on that very stuff. I'm trying to to fetch the same record I, I created. Uh, and I, I passed as a basis the TX key. I just got back from the insertion, uh, you know, to make sure that XTDB has uh, indexed the, the stuff. And this is the asset here. Uh, and here, here's the code in Lisp. Uh, and it looks like surprisingly the same. Uh, yeah, and so this code is wrong as a matter of fact. Because that's okay, I will see it in my code. So this, it was before, so what happened? Is like a couple of days ago, everything was working fine with a uh, data log kind of, uh, um, you know, because um, XCDB was still supporting data log uh, and XTQL was in the making basically and was not, you know, was still an option. 
uh, and uh, uh, quite recently, um, there is no more data log in XCDB, basically, so it's not an option. So that code was written before, but like obviously, so I had to rewrite this one, but in, in the, in the, it does basically the same. So that's, uh, this is, this is, a, this is a data log query, basically, old school data make DC. So what you see here is a keyword and what you see between uh, uh, pipes, is basically I specify that the keyword should be in a lower case. This is like it's here for historical reason. Um, um, uh, the 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 runtime by default doesn't make any difference between uppercase and lowercase for symbols. You see, so but if you adamant of specifying the lowercase, which we are, because uh, in this case you you put it into uh, between those uh, uh, pipes. Um, the thing is you can modify, it's an option, and I could modify my uh, my reader so that it is case sensitive, but I don't want that. And I, I prefer keeping the old school way. Um, and I think that's it. So it's enough. Yeah, it's enough. So now we're gonna, it's more fun and we have enough time. So that's gonna be the uh, the part where it crashes, you see. So, yeah. So here's basically what I'm gonna run. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So here's the main, which I'm gonna call. Okay, so that's exactly the code we saw before, but here that's the new way of writing stuff. You see, it's like a, a put is basically a helper, which comes with HTTP, which is gonna, you know, which is going to turn on that stuff into the right structure so that, you know, understood by the kernel, basically by CDB, right? And that's a query. And here we have this new notation, which is the XQTL, which are basically, you know, this is all in quotes, basically, you know, and that stuff will basically be turned into a string passed to the kernel, basically. And obviously, you've got the hours and stuff and so on. But this is the stuff. So I commented out the stress sleep, and, I, you know, I'm just going around you know, uh, forever. So I'm going to launch it now. Uh, it's here. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. What? Oh. I'm like, OK, two. Okay. Okay, so here's one. Yeah. So that's, can you, it doesn't matter. So it's every 10 in session is putting your account basically to see that system, something moving. And by the way, when I'm here, I'm gonna run, so I'm gonna compile my, my uh, common list stuff. Oh, so I should make, I'm uh, building a, a, an executable and I'm running it now. And it's gonna do the same. It's posting a different table. I don't wanna create, you know, some contention. He's doing exactly the same stuff. Let's look at, at the, at the Common list code. Uh, here you go. And I'll make it a bit bigger. So that's my code. So, but in the meantime, that's the code running. Same shit, same stuff. You see, so. Oh, we can see that, you know, there is a put here. There is a bit of syntax. What's weird is this syntax here. Uh, and then it's basically completely, I, I bang my head to find a way to, uh, to carry, uh, I didn't want to pass XQTL. Actually, I started doing it and I have a parser for XQTL in common list, but it's useless. And I realized actually my DSL, a list is a DSL, sex are a DSL, and here you go. And I have access to everything. So the back, the back quote is basically, you know, it's a quote, except in the back quote, a comma is going to just like punch a hole in the whole thing. And so here, uh, the table is my parameter. And this vector here, this is a function. So something I need to tell you, we don't have these things in common list. You know, we don't have these, these, uh, these sugars or, uh -oh. yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't have this, this syntactic sugar, which has closure, you know, this thing like that, you know, which, uh, which are, which are, um, you know, uh, with a set here. These are closures that we don't have on all of these, basically, you know, and uh, you'll see. So we have some, we could introduce some syntax and have the, the reader 
just like uh, with Macro and blah, 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 and all that stuff, and make it look like common list, com com closure, but we don't want to do that, really. You see, so, and it's perfectly okay. So here, I'm calling Dict, and Dict is going to just create a dictionary on the fly, and I have these keys, so the XTID, the XTID I generated here, I have a new ID, a fresh ID, some text, I created a user ID here, and I make sure, and so I store back the TXT key, and, uh, you know, the, in my query, I, this is my query now, uh, the query is the stuff, I pass a node, the node is the node I created here, which is basically I, I created a client, and if you want to look at the client, it's like super lean, there's nothing in it, you know, there's just like, a, you know, store the URL, uh, and then uh, there's the latest submitted transaction, just like I don't need to do that, but I can still do it. And the owner, because, um, you know, I'm not multi-thread staff, I don't want to be multi-thread staff, so big. Only the, 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 the transaction, submitted transaction can modify that stuff. So I make sure it's callable only if you are the owner. And so if you try to call it from different sets, you can read, but you cannot write basically. Um, anyway, just, just uh, yeah. So this is, this is all in the code uh, and so forth. Yeah, so just have a look at this. Yeah, these are basically copies and passed from the, copies and passed from the, from the TPCD stuff, the, the TPCH uh, closure uh, XCDB code. So I just wrote them and turned them into some query stuff. So if I look at this one, for example, this is my query. You know, this is exactly this is what my query looks like. But we don't want, we don't want to write these things. You see, so my my little DSL with back back quote back tick and so forth. You know, comma uh, does the job here. And actually, let's run one of these query here. Um, so I've loaded XTD with a bunch of stuff. So I can create a node here. Uh, do I have a node? Let's, let's, let me create a node. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to load that stuff here. Uh, what? Uh, this is where things stop working. Oh, that's fine. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I've created some shit here. Uh, 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 some, uh, yeah. Okay, what? It needs to fail, actually, yeah. That's fine. Uh-huh. the fuck? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, ASD. Yeah, I need to compile the stuff, actually. Okay. Now it's good. Okay, I got my node and I, my query is here. I'm gonna run this query. And, oh yeah, shit, I did a length, so. So that's the, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's just a second, bear with me. Yeah, and I'm running it. And here's the query, you know, we have all the countries from TPCD and this, this is exactly what it's up. So that's really, um, that's really basically, um, yeah, exactly. We can try Q2, which is more fun. Uh, yeah. So we had, oh, you know, this is, I've, I've checked all the data here. It's just like, uh, even the, the numbers, obviously this is transit It's going over transit. That's a library I developed uh, before just for fun. I never had a bug in it. So it's, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it. Okay, so now we have this stuff running and then just have a look at, um, uh, where is it now? Uh, empty, yeah. So, uh, XTDB, so that's my client here. So I'm not sure if you can see that here, but, uh, and then uh, Java, I think this is this one here. Yeah, so can you read? I cannot make it uh, bigger. 
Yeah, but this, so this is basically my 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 clients, my Java clients, and this is basically my common list clients. So, whoa! I know this is Emacs. This is not the right one, actually. Yes. Ah, this is this one here. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, because I know that because this is ZSH, uh, the parent shell is ZSH. And so it's like real memory 304, real memory 133, statistics here, which is more important. Number of threads, 439 going up and down. I have no idea why. Uh, you know, like uh, CPU time, uh, 48. So basically, it's like really setting up CPU is 6%, one person steady here, doesn't change. Um, the number of file descriptors here open, I have exactly what I need, basically. So I, have, I still have a memory pool, so a connection pool for, for the, the HTTP clients, but, you know, just, just one connection open to the server here. I have no idea what's in there. You know, it's just, um, yeah. I never, this is a simple, this is like, we have nothing. We're just like a simple client. Uh, you know, these are, these are connections and this is like the joy of Africa. Uh, JT and these things, you know, it's part of the fat you have from running a JVM basically. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's it actually. Are you good? Anybody if this is good? I'm interested, Jan, in this question of like, so you, these representations that you've got coming out of the database, instead of deciding that uh, these keys should be case insensitive, you've decided to fix them to lower case. Is no. this like no, a... No, 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 no. So closure is case sensitive. Hmm. And so this is coming, this is coming from, from, from closure, from, uh, from XTDB. And so I, I, this is this is data I receive that this is com, this is transmitted by by transit, you know this is transit stuff coming on HTTP mm -hmm. basically, and it tells me that I have a map. It tells me that I have the the, the keys like a, a symbol, a, a keyword, uh, lowercase r, and I use that as a symbol basically. And I'm sorry. So when I when I report those stuff, I just display the fact that I mean it is going to be inset. Like if I if I if I do this. It, uh, EQL uh, is going to say yes through here it means like it, it is the same but like uh, if I uh, because but if I do this it's nil it's not it's not true and then so we we just like symbols like that's the convention you know like when it's really meaning when nothing is said it's basically whatever it's like mm -hmm. a, a, capital, a caps lock but, um, uh, uppercase, but when it's in like that, it means it's lowercase basically, and that's a that's a map, and that's that's how it is played. That is how the you know the Reaper uh, writes it basically. I have I have overloaded the function uh, mm. print object basically to say like when you see a map, just display this way basically. So that's the other way you see they're not nice. Yeah, I guess you do actually, you need to be able to support like mixed case in XC and get it right, I guess. Like if you yeah, were yeah. to treat it in case insensitive, then actually you couldn't, there's no like rule to to transform it then back into XT. You sort of need no. to be able to represent up it here. They're all lowercase, right? But they could have a, there could be a capital letter in there that's important. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Yeah. That, that would be like here, I could say, for example, I could say here. But then yeah. you know that wouldn't work basically because that, that mm. would that's capital XT and then this like the, I mean you know it's just, just cumbersome to have these between pipes you know that's mm. we get used to it anyway um, and that's super fast that's it I think yeah I do have a question how is the library ecosystem in common list? As in common list? It, yeah, 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 li yeah. Libraries. Do you have like all, most of the libraries that you need, or because in JVM, that's for me, this is like one of the 
really powerful things of the JVM, right? That you do have an incredible ecosystem. Exactly. And like a lot of libraries are really well written. I mean, like they are, they've been around for quite a while and they are fairly battle tested. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a good question. Um, and that's the same. That's one of the bleeding part. I mean, not the bleeding part, as a matter of fact. We don't have the, the, the spec doesn't. The specification of ANSI doesn't specify libraries, basically. You know, that's just like bare, the bare language. So you're on your own. However, as I said, it's been around for 40 years. And, you know, we have a set of libraries. One of them is Serapeum. And this is, if you read the GitHub, I explained that a bit in the... We have FSET. We have basically Dexador for HTTP. And these libraries are well known. And they kind of they act as a standard. They battle testing, basically. And everybody uses them. And uh, we don't really, we don't really, uh, you know, they open source, you know, there's been like so many papers and, and publications. And so, yes, you're right. Uh, it's not standardized, uh, but we have like USOC, USOCET for sockets. And obviously there's been some effort to normalize the building of uh, like, you know, you see me doing Mac here. So it's still going here. We don't care now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have this little make file here, but just to make it nice. But this is this is the stands for common list here. This is like I'm coming list and I load this program and here I'm building. This is basically I do a quick load and I, I use ASDF and ASDF is like a Mac. This is like a, a this is a standard actually. Every this list distro to port ASDF. And if you look at this file here, uh, yes, this one here is basically how I define my stuff. I said, this is my package. I'm, I'm defining a system which is called uh, CBCL, blah, blah, blah. I depend on this. This is the, the transit library I wrote. Alexandra, Alexandra yeah, is one of those fixes streams. Then like, if you, if you do, if you do common list, these are basically borders thread is a, de facto standards, basically, you know, they're not, uh, yeah. Um, and then the, the next bit for that is, um, uh, my packages. So here, uh, oh shit. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, I define a package. So this is, this is, this is, this is standard list actually. And I say, well, the pack package are like modules. You don't, you're not stuck with one class or one, one stuff, no, one namespace per file. You can have multiple uh, 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 modules spawning over multiple files. Uh, you know, and then here I say, this is this stuff. There's, there's an, um, a nickname for it, so you don't have to call it this way. Uh, I mean, from this setup, I want vect, dict, href, so that here in the code, I could say, if I, for example, uh, uh, so say, uh, p dict, uh, that shit. Oh, no. Yeah, anyway, this, I, I, I don't have to, to call anything. What? Yeah. I saw Alexander, yeah, man, shit. Oh man, sorry. Hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. So I don't have to call that. You know, I'm importing this, this, these, uh, these symbols. Um, yeah, and I've, I've got all the magic macros. These, these arrows, and I can do the same. So it's like in closure, and this is coming from closure. It's very funny to see that a bunch of closure is to say we want to have the same stuff in this. And so they, they backported a bunch of stuff from closure to link to list actually. And so I have all of these stuff basically, you know, some, some arrow and everything I can probably the same way, plus more. Anyway. And how do you find working without closures data structures? Like immutable the closures immutable data structures are kind of one of its biggest like powers, really. I guess it's better for GC, lighter on GC, but how do you find working without them? So to be honest, to be honest, like that's just my personal opinion, right? Like 
I don't, I'm not convinced about this immaturity stuff. So you say, it's, okay, it's cool. You know, it's like, it serves a purpose for sure. It makes your life easier. You got some certainty from that. But, you know, I don't really care. I mean, I, I'm, I'm used to not using those stuff, basically. And, I, you know, and as, as I said in my mutating merge hash table, I don't need this stuff. I, I, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing. You see, yeah. so why do I need this? And so, and, and then I found out as a critic on, 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 on closure, you know, it's like, okay, everything is a map, blah, blah, blah. And so, so people are, are scared and they're starting specking. It calls for a bunch of new software like, you know, Specs and Mali and all that stuff, basically, you see? Like, they, they, they just derived the side effect of using this immutability and everything is a structure, everything is a map, basically. Um, and, um, yeah, so I'm not bothered, actually. And I, I don't, I think, as I, because I come from C, I, I don't really care for those stuff. I don't really care. I, I, I'm annoyed actually. I, I want to do it myself. It's like, I know what I'm doing. This is like a, but that's my opinion, you know, like you're not going to shoot yourself, but then it comes at the cost basically, for sure. You know, um, if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, this is like, a, yeah, it's, it's, you're not going to kill yourself with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I still have some, co I, I, I can cord on the SBL, SBCL. You see, I have cordons. <laughs> so yeah. You can do stupid stuff with SBCL, which is common list for sure. It's yeah. very hard to call under JVM, you know. So I guess uh, there's some trade-offs. Making uh, making uh, developers more uh, productive quickly, you know. Having armies of developers basically, you know, it doesn't cost much to form them and train them basically, you know. Um, um, that was the promise of Java, uh, but. In a way, Rust is trying to do that exactly. You know, Rust has a, is, Rust says, okay, we need to be fast. So we, we have a compiler, we have like very efficient stuff, blah, 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 but we, we protect you with a very horrendous type system, which is a really pain in the butt to work. And then, so you have to write like a long, very long expression like that just to work around the type system to try to do your stuff. And, you know, um, that comes at a cost basically. And then, and then therefore Rust is very difficult for this reason. Uh, to learn, mm -hmm. because uh, you have to comp you have to compete against a file type system to try to do what you do. Uh, it takes a lot of time to learn it. That's my opinion. <clears throat> what is so, the what is the common lisp stance on laziness? Does it have uh, any not, form of laziness? None, but none. But it's a good question. But I I see a library and then some very very smart guy PhDs and stuff like they have like, written libraries for laziness. Um, um, I don't have an opinion on this. I usually, I suspect it's not very useful. It's not as useful as it may seem. I suspect this laziness stuff is a, is a consequence of uh, hypothesis made uh, implementation choices in closure, and uh, I I don't see the the need for laziness. Um, um, you know, but you have we have strings and the strings they get you the next stuff when you need them basically. Um, but let's it, yeah. But there are there are some libraries which give you laziness as as enclosure. I haven't seen people using that. There, there was a question in the chat, yeah, and a couple of questions uh, from I James. That. I noticed that you've got some type declarations for optimization. Have you had a go at using Serapium's type declaration stuff since you're using that library already? I haven't used Serape on stuff. Uh, I'm using Serape on stuff. Uh, I haven't used Serape on one. Uh, uh, I'm using Serape on library. The type, we have two types. Obviously, every uh, common list is typed. You got a whole bunch of types, uh, you know, and then it's a very, very strong type and a very, very, very nice type hierarchy, as a matter of fact. Super cool. It's really, really cool. Very smart. And so, but obviously it's a dynamic language and dynamic type system, you see. So at the end of the day, the type will be determined at execution time. You see, it's like, it's not really, you know, that's, that's you know, that's a, that's a joy. You can just stick it whatever and you find out what it is and do the right thing with it, supposedly. So that goes against performance. And so you have all kinds of tools to mess with types and say, okay, like I expect this function to work on it with this type. And so you, so you can, you have two types of two, two, two form of, uh, 
uh, using types. First, you you impose that the type should be this 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 thing. So if what's if the parameter doesn't have this type, you have an exception. You have a runtime exception or an error, basically. You're gonna say you know there's gonna bail out, and you have the declare stuff, which is gonna, which is okay. Uh, you know my intention is to use this type, so therefore you just advise the compiler. If you go into optimization, that this side, don't worry about it. And so I, I suspect Java is kind of the same stuff. I can see the command actually. And the other one, just have you happen to do any benchmarking on uh, your XCDB CL client versus the Clojure client? No, I haven't done it. Um, and so that's a good thing, actually, because uh, I was going to ask uh, uh, um, Jeremy is gone, actually. But I wanted to find some nice workload, some some good workloads from the TPCH stuff. And basically, so create a benchmark, such a benchmark. I haven't done it. I would love to have one of those. But uh, I didn't have any time. You see, it's like, uh, because I know that the, the, the XCDB uh, team has a very strong uh, benchmarking with a... Uh, uh, the TPCH, which is basically an uh, OLAP kind of benchmark, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's pretty cool. And everything is ready for, as a matter of fact, like my XTDB is loaded with a 0 0.05 scale factor TPCH database. Um, but I mean, like, uh, you would have to run a big stuff and, and, and fetch a bunch of data and stuff. But I, yeah, from what I see, it's like, so, there's no, there's no comparison. It's like 10 times fold, um, you know, um, in, and then in resources as well. It's super light. I could run that on my, uh, my mobile actually. I guess you well soon you'll be able to pit the uh, the Rust lib and the CL lisp uh, lib so, against each other. Yeah. So <laughs> so just one one last thing. One last thing, and this is like about a closing comment actually about that stuff. You see, so so I said to like, what do we want to run into our uh, containers? And so yeah, so of course efficient stuff. So like Rust and blah 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 blah. So and common list as well because we dynamic language are cool. Are really cool and some stuff works really good in dynamic languages basically you don't want to get rid of dynamic languages you want to keep them they're cool you see and common list is one of them actually and it's, it's super cool and so uh yeah so yes like about about like the transit stuff in in, in common list was kind of okay right although it's a very hard difficult library to code it's very very tricky actually but it's, it's kind of okay i try to do that in rust it's just like a, it can be a nightmare you see, it's like a, because, and, and then how would you express, you would have to come up with some DSL to express those queries. You see my queries in uh, my XQTB, uh, XTQL stuff in, uh, in common list is like supernatural. It's like a sex, you know, bam, just like, you know, it's like, I, like I try to do that in Rust. You're going to have to come up with like an imposing, uh, uh, you know, and come up with a macro system to define your own DSL and stuff. I'm like, it's heavy. It's like, it's ugly, you know. It's just not meant for that. Yeah, I, it's my opinion, you know. So I will come up with a library, but I'm thinking more doing it in C, actually. Uh, mm. uh, so, so, so like low level C, and then I give it a binding, could be used to any language they want, but I, uh, it would be more portable as far as uh, um, giving a, a, a client uh, a client for XDB. It would be, a, you know, like J Kafka, Confluent, uh, they have a first class citizen uh, Java library, which is like, it does everything. And then they have a C1 called Libardi Kafka, which is like co-share, 100% supported, 100% covering the whole spectrum of the wire protocol from Kafka. And it's super cool. And I really use that when they're not Java. And I think uh, the, uh, the XCDB should do something similar, basically. You know, they, they, they support the, the Java closure like a first class citizen library for you know people in this stuff but then there's another one low level which people can use you know and uh yeah cool um well yeah thanks very much for that tour Jan. just like yeah. there's a lot we got uh, an introduction to common list for free there some philosophy about you know the <laughs> the sort of economic climate of all these things across the decades so yeah really like fascinating way of looking at those things i guess if anyone is interested to do a bit more common list and like to play around there is a list channel on slack i believe yeah. um so 
you know, join a and, nice and, um, Jan and Jamie are like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the local like Lisp experts if you want to get some help. I think Jamie knows more than me. So she's uh, more expert <laughs> than me, actually. She's been doing that for longer than me, actually. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, thanks very much for joining all. And uh, yeah, we'll see you um, see you next time. I, I think maybe the next uh, the next one will be after Christmas now in the new year. Um, and I think we're going to be hearing then about, um, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I'll, I'll share in Slack what's the next topic up for discussion. Cool. Okay. Thanks again, Jan. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Bye. -bye. Cheers. Bye.